The particular focus on sexual violence is really triggered by the absolutely appalling and brutal nature of this type of violation. I mean, one just has to first think about what it means for a victim of sexual abuse to deal with the consequences, both physical but also psychological of that type of abuse. It's, it's something that is very often underreported, underestimated in terms of armed conflict, and therefore there's a real sense of a need to mobilize and think very differently about this issue in situations of armed conflict. Fundamentally, in dealing with sexual violence, we need a paradigm shift. Previously, what one would say is, our teams are there, they are in contact with the population, we haven't heard many allegations around sexual violence, therefore we presume it isn't such a widespread issue. We need the opposite. We need to assume that sexual violence and abuse is going to be widespread and we need to develop ways of engaging with the population that brings the violations to the fore and helps us address the needs more effectively. It is essential to understand also that sexual violence, of course, affects first and foremost the victims of the act themselves. But it has multiple effects, including at community level, because there is, it is associated with all sorts of taboos, shame, ostracization of victims by the communities themselves and it is often used as an act deliberately of war to destabilize, dehumanize and in fact disrupt entire communities. Historically we have to be very clear that the ICRC had not done enough about this issue and it's only in the last decade or so that we have started to come to terms with what this means in terms of violations for the people affected, but also what it means to try and address this more meaningfully. We are now deeply committed to reinforcing our activities in this regard, and in this everything from the medical response we give to victims, the psychological and psychosocial support that we can provide in different ways, the economic support in terms of reintegration, but also the prevention activities in order to ensure that countries adopt national legislation that are, of course, supportive of the efforts and in favor of victims uh, of sexual violence. One often hears comments about the fact that sexual violence appears to be inevitable in armed conflict. That's something we cannot accept as ICRC. First of all, the law, international humanitarian law, prohibits such acts, and it's our responsibility to take those messages to the armed groups to insist on that fact but also with governments to seek to mobilize and to prevent these issues from happening. And for that, awareness raising is crucial.